Robert Durst, rich and infamous, the heir to a real estate fortune and a suspect in multiple murders. In the decades since the disappearance of Durst's wife, Kathy, the story surrounding the eccentric millionaire has become increasingly bizarre. A mutilated corpse, multiple aliases, even mafia-style hits. In these exclusive interviews, we'll hear the theory that may connect the dots between Robert Durst and victims Kathy Durst, Susan Berman, and Morris Black. Morris Black was her mobster babysitter. And the allegations that there are still other bodies connected to Robert Durst. I was convinced that Durst was a serial killer. In 1982, Robert Durst's wife, Kathy, goes missing in New York. His behavior leads police to suspect Robert, but there isn't enough evidence to arrest him. In 2000, Durst's best friend, Susan Berman, dies in a mob-style execution in Los Angeles. Susan's deceased father, Davey Berman, had been a major figure in the Jewish mafia. Rumors circulated that her death was related somehow to her family's line of work. In 2001, Morris Black is found mutilated and floating in a bay in Galveston, Texas. Investigators discover that Morris Black's neighbor is Dorothy Siner, who turns out to be Robert Durst disguised as a woman. It is unclear why Durst would kill Black. Black is a stranger to Durst. Durst stands trial for Morris Black's murder. Despite admitting to mutilating Black, Durst claims it was self-defense and is found not guilty. Durst is released and doesn't resurface again publicly until 2015, when he becomes the subject of an HBO documentary, The Jinx. After a long interview, the documentary filmmakers catch Durst talking to himself during a bathroom break. He utters a series of cryptic phrases. Here it is, the court. That I do. Kill the mob, of course. Other material uncovered by the filmmakers leads to Durst's arrest. In March of 2015, he is officially charged with the murder of Susan Berman. These three people, all associated with Robert Durst, met with calamity. Why? Private investigator Bobby Bacha has a theory that she believes connects all the dots. Bacha became involved with the Durst case when she was hired by a newspaper to find out who Morris Black was and why an apparent stranger would want to kill him. The Galveston Daily News actually called me and they said, they need to find out who this guy is. Why would he be murdered by Robert Durst? During her investigation, Bacha discovered a few bombshells. First, despite being 72 years old, Morris Black had almost no presence in public records. When I looked at Morris Black, it was like someone trying to hide. It was like I was looking at some type of mobster. I tracked him down, found his entire family. Turns out, Morris had a brother, Harry Black, who had also dropped out of society. So Harry was hiding, Morris was apparently hiding. After Durst was acquitted for Morris Black's murder, Harry Black died. Then, his widow came to Bacha with another bombshell. Morris and Harry Black in their teens became merchant marines. After the merchant marines, somehow or another, they ended up working for the Durst organizations. The widow told me that Harry admitted to her that he and Morris both helped make Cassidy Durst disappear. Here are the major points of Bacha's theory. One. Susan Berman knew the Black Brothers through her father's mob connections. She was raised by her father, who is Davey Berman. It's a Jewish mobster type gang. So they would only allow Jewish mobsters in the gangs. Morris Black and Harry Black would be perfect candidates because they're Jewish. They're just out of Merchant Marines. Morris Black was maybe her mobster babysitter. Two, Susan Berman recommended the brothers work at the Durst organization. She may have very well known them and even maybe referred them to work at the farm for the Durst organization. That's where they allegedly met Robert. Three, on the night that Robert allegedly killed Kathy, Susan was the first person he called. Kathy came back and I believe she confronted Robert and she says, I want a divorce. He may not have planned to kill her, but I think that's the night he killed her. But however he killed her, 
I believe that that's when he contacted Susan Berman to come help him get rid of the evidence. Four, the Black Brothers disposed of Kathy. They pulled in the Morris Black Brothers. Five, the Black Brothers were paid off. Harry got some type of motor home and gold and money and went to Canada. Later, Morris comes up owning an apartment complex, so where did he get the money for that? Six, the Black Brothers disappeared. The brothers stayed apart after Kathy Durst's disappearance. And, and if you look at the backgrounds, it shows that. These two separated and they were never together after that again. Seven, Morris Black resurfaces in 1998. Morris Black actually threatened to blow up the local gas company because he was upset about a refund and he was actually arrested. This is the first time you really see Morris Black coming up on any type of real records because before he stays off the grid. Eight. Robert Durst allegedly kills Susan in 2000. Susan Berman had just been shot point blank in the back of the head. She was a mobster's daughter. She would never let anyone that close to her unless they knew her. Robert Durst was her friend. He could have gotten that close. Nine, Robert Durst gets paranoid and goes looking for Morris Black. Robert Durst had to find out, was he going to be angry about Susan Berman's murder? He wanted to keep an eye on him to see if he was a, gonna spill the beans on what happened to Kathy. So Robert Durst comes into town wearing the wig, dressed as a very bad looking woman, acting like a deaf mute and gets the apartment across from Morse Black. Robert Durst is there dressed as Dorothy Siner. 10, Robert Durst kills Morris Black. Morris Black is basically losing it. He could not be trusted and he had to take care of that. So, Botch's theory, Robert kills Kathy. 18 years later, he fears Susan will talk and kills her. And then, he kills Morris Black to tie up loose ends. What is the evidence for this theory? According to what the widow told me, she allegedly had a suitcase with all the information that proved that Harry Black and Morris were involved in the murder. The family was so afraid because Robert Durst was not in jail at that time. So they decided as a family to get rid of everything in the suitcase. Bobby Bacha speculates further. She believes that Robert Durst's body count far exceeds three. I think he's a serial killer. Coming up, Bobby Bacha is not the only one who believes that Robert Durst has more murders under his belt. Durst had apparently dismembered someone before. Matt Birkbeck is a journalist who has been covering the Durst case for over a decade. Going through the first year of the Durst case, I always thought it was a case of husband kills wife, uh, gets away with it, and then justice prevails years later. Then you had the murder of Susan Berman, so now you're adding in the killing of a witness which still to me wasn't atypical. Where the case really went off the rails was the murder of Morris Black. And then we find out that Durst had been masquerading as a deaf mute woman, had been using phony identification that he had stolen. The other thing to me that was really chilling that I learned from Cody Kaslas was that Durst had apparently dismembered someone before. Kaslas said that whoever dismembered Morris Black had done it so well, they had to have done it before. So now I'm thinking, oh my God, what does that mean? I was convinced that Durst was a serial killer. Over the course of his research, Birkbeck has found several other cases that may link back to Robert Durst. Middlebury, Vermont, 1971. Lynn Schultz is last seen standing outside of all good things. Robert Durst's health food store. She is never seen again. And then, there's the Eureka, California case of 16-year-old Karen Mitchell. Karen Mitchell was a beautiful, aspiring young student at Eureka High School who was living with her aunt uh, in Eureka, and uh, she wound up missing. Robert Durst was in there in the late 90s, at about that time um, that Karen Mitchell went disappearing. Robert Durst was a suspect, primarily because of proximity. The second piece of that was uh, Robert Durst is a um, recluse who has some strange behaviors. And the third reason is one person uh, did a composite sketch. After she is reported missing, a witness comes forward that says he saw Karen Mitchell with an older man the day she vanished. He draws a composite picture of the man he saw. The 
composite is the spitting image of Bobby. Another connection between Karen Mitchell and Robert Durst exists. Then we find out that Durst had visited her aunt's clothing store, Trust and Drag. There was a, a story that allegedly that Robert Durst went into the store. Supposedly, Karen waited on him, and evidently he was supposedly cross-dressed at the time. We continue to investigate it. We continue currently to recognize him as a potential suspect. Despite the disappearance of Kathy and the murders of Susan Berman and Morris Black, Mills is not convinced Durst abducted Karen Mitchell. Those are three people he knew. Those are three people that, you know, he may have had a motive to do that. Logic would dictate that um, the person who might abduct a 16, 17-year-old girl would be a completely different than person, somebody murdering somebody who's close to them. Burt Beck, however, believes that Durst's famous bathroom slip-up in the Jinx may hold the key to solving the deaths of Karen Mitchell and many others. See, everyone's thinking that he admitted to killing Susan Berman and Morris Black and Kathy Durst. Of course. But in my mind, when he said he killed them all, that meant other people. To me, that was just um, more or less a confession. So the, 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 the remaining question is, was he a serial killer? How long had he been doing it? And how many people? Hopefully, Robert Durst's upcoming trial for the murder of Susan Berman will reveal some of the answers to these questions and shed some light on Robert Durst's past. The clock is ticking, so it's important to get answers before they go to the grave with Robert Durst.